now live on the stream. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, My favorite part about the streaming is the stream. uh, Right? Everybody talks about the other things. They should be talking about the stream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It flows so good. Trickle, trickle is the opposite of what this is. It's a big old full-fashioned stream. Full-fashioned. So fun. Speaking of which, um, oh, so uh, my wait. wife. <laughs> okay, yeah, here, you want to? Uh, well, go ahead. Go ahead. We're, yeah, we, 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 we are a, live on the air. It's fine. It's just for, this is appropriate. We, we got a, <laughs> no. Um, we got the Jura big fancy ass coffee machine because oh, she yeah. loves coffee. Um, she was very and, excited uh, the last time that we talked. She's still over the moon for it. it it's replaced me. Um, but uh, I'm like, I'm like, I mean, it's like coffee machine costs like the price of my first car. So I'm like, I need to start drinking coffee now because I got this thing. I'm going to make this thing work, you know? Um, and, uh, so yesterday, like, I'm like, well, let me try like a flat white with some sugar in it. Mm -hmm. So I had one. It's kind of good. kind of dug it. I'm like, let me go have another one. And I had it. It was pretty good. And then, uh, genius, um, grown up man here, uh, Never realized the caffeine in coffee was like three times that in a diet in a soda. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'll get so you. So I was, I never, I don't think I remember being that wired, probably after taking a Red Bull or something like this, but I'm like, I'm How many rock operas did you write? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, man, I got a lot of energy. Like, what's going on? <laughs> I was the first time that I ever had. I was in college and me and a bunch of friends were screwing around. I think we had seen a movie, but at the mall, they had a, uh, a coffee stand. And for whatever reason, I'd never seen a red eye. A red eye is a regular coffee with an espresso inside of it. Oh God. Uh, and so it is just a, 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 a you know, the, the, the adrenaline pen from Pulp Fiction, but in liquid form. And, uh, we were just all wired. Like all of us got it, and all of us were just wired for sound for the next like four hours. It was it was insane. Hilarious. Oh, all right. There you go. That'll happen. Well, yeah. Just keep it to uh, you know once a week. <laughs> I won't never. <laughs> okay, are right. you ready to take us in, Andrew? Mm-hmm. Nope. All right. Three. Oh wait, nope. Whoops, I messed it up because it sometimes it gives me a are you sure thing. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, hello. Justin Robert Young. Well, hello, friends. Gentlemen, um, it's very sad news to announce is that that is that Daniel Dennett has passed away. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Daniel Dennett uh, was a professor, a writer of philosophy, and incredible writer, in my opinion. He's part of my big three of uh, Matt Ridley, Richard Dawkins, and his book, Darwin's Dangerous Idea and Consciousness Explained, like, I think had probably more profound of a way of uh, explaining things to me and probably some of the way that I try to explain that stuff. And, and very sad to hear that he's passed. Uh, uh, was it known that he was ill or uh, you, you know, I, I, I don't know yeah. i i literally don't know much of the details about that you know uh I, I i know that i read consciousness explained oh my goodness uh 30 years ago back at college and it had uh an impact on me uh after that i knew him mostly by reputation um uh and uh especially i i know him the most from people offering thoughtful critiques of his stuff. And that's one of the wonderful things about, um, uh, you know, academia and philosophy is that people politely say, you're full of it and here's why. And uh, as a result, I learned an awful lot about uh, uh, what his positions were. But uh, uh, the loss of a great mind is always, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. a a tragedy. Yeah, he's... Oh, say again. Sorry, I just had to reset my Wi-Fi. I 
what what I appreciate about him, one is I thought his explanations are very clear. I really could understand things that other people said articulately. He had really wonderful ways of coming up with these thought experiences. Oh no. Oh no. Mm-hmm. Gonna have to do some editing this time. Yeah. Might be able to restart. Just go from the beginning. And then, like, suddenly I can have a different take. I'd be all Experiments, because, like, we ah. talked about in, like, consciousness. Ah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, no. Oh. Is it one of those? Who's in this at all? Are we uh, going out clear, audience? Anybody who's in the uh, chat room, are we going out clear? Um, yeah. Seems like we're going out okay. Uh, gambling man, uh, does it appear to be our end or? Well, he said he had to reset his Wi-Fi, so I, I would imagine that that means that he did not have particular faith in it. Okay, I, uh, a gambling man says Austin studio is clear. Yeah. We are GTG over here. Uh, I assume he might be restarting something. Yeah, maybe we'll start from the beginning again. He's left the meeting. Okay. Yeah. Well, at least now there's two Justins. Hey, we got him back. Um, do 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 we want to let's uh, yeah start, no, 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 start no. from the let's, beginning? Let's, okay. yeah right, from the go. top from okay. the top all right here we go uh, <clears throat> uh, recording is stopping and recording is about to begin in three two one hello and welcome to the weird things podcast I'm Andrew Main joined by Mr Brian Brushwood hello hello and Justin Robert Young hello friends. Well, it's very sad to say today, but Daniel Dennett has passed away. Uh, Daniel Dennett was just an amazing writer, professor, and philosopher. Um, I, When I think of people who have been extremely influential on me, absolutely him, his book, Darwin's Dangerous Idea and Consciousness Explained, uh, they had a very profound way on the way that I looked at the world, the way I understood arguments and would think about thought experiments. Well, and, and I barely remember Consciousness Explained from when I read it back in college 30 years ago. Um, uh, uh, and I have not read the other books. And, and I know that philosophers be philosophing about, you know, who's right about what aspects uh, and so on. But it sounds like, if I'm hearing you correctly, the most profound part was the simplicity with which he explained stuff that, that was uh, the real gift. Can you hear us, Andrew? I, I hear you now. It just seems like the connection keeps fading in and out. Okay. Uh, 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 Brian was saying that it was the simplicity of uh, Dennett's explanations that really made the wisdom shine through. Yeah, absolutely. I remember a number of the ways that he would phrase stuff. For an example, talking about the idea of at what level, you know, talk about like if you're, I'm going to, I'm going to monk bank, you know, I'm going to, totally screw this up but the idea if you're talking about like the idea of you know uh veganism or you know looking at animals at what level do you, do you think of something as being conscious or having some form of sentience or whatever you know how many neurons does it take and he talks about you know if your arm gets severed in a car accident and they want to reattach it should you use an anesthetic on the arm because the arm feels pain and some of these things start off as kind of ridiculous, but then you think about it and you go, okay, so if my arm has more nerve endings than some other form of life or something, how do I think about that? How do I, how do I, you know, think about this put in context? And there wasn't always an answer, but it was a really good question to help you understand that sometimes these things weren't as clear cut as we may think, or you have to make, you know, a line somewhere. Well, uh, and, uh, he and, had, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. It sounds like you have more teed up. Go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, well, well, like the arm example is fascinating because like the arm is certainly sending the signals of pain, uh, but but 
does it feel pain itself is an interesting question. And to what extent? Mm-hmm. Um, and and I, I must admit that that I I I uh, uh, the more dogs I have in my life, the more I question where the boundaries are of consciousness because uh, uh, I have a Weimar honor named Joyful and uh, there's no doubt that there is a discussion that is being had. Like she knows what I'm saying when I open up the door and, you know, tilt my head to go outside. And I know when she sits there and just looks at the door, looks at me, looks at the door, looks at me, we're having a negotiation and then sometimes I, I take a couple steps forward and she's like, okay, fine. And off she goes. Mm-hmm. Other times I have to uh, just, I don't even have to grab her collar. I just touch her collar and she's like, okay, okay, fine, fine. Like, like there's definitely some form of consciousness there. And, and uh, these are the borderlands that, that I think uh, uh, Dennett was so good at exploring. Yeah, or or you might say there's intelligence. Is there consciousness? Because there can be one without you can have intelligence without consciousness. But yeah, it, it's it's I love that because a lot of times in reading is that there weren't specific answers. I think he, you know he talk about I think you do like you know the idea of you know the soul or that like you know what happens if you teleport? You destroy the matter you create it. Or what if you have you go to sleep at night and we take one percent of your brain and replace it and we do this over a series of you know a hundred nights. Like like a ship of what, uh, theses. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Theses, the, yeah. yeah. He, he could apply that to these things, and I loved it because his he 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 was he loved science, and and you could read him, and he was very compatible with you know like I I loved reading him, Matt Ridley and Richard Dawkins. Those people were like my favorite. Those were my three really like just just key people that just really profoundly influenced the way I looked about look things because they were I could take ideas from one and apply them to the other and apply them to the other and they were just extremely you know compatible uh I to be honest I, I could spend the next hour just hearing more examples of things that that <laughs> that landed with yeah. you well, I would, I mean, again, I, I, I recommend like Consciousness Explained is, it's not that big of a book. I think it's a really good intro to it. Like, like two of my favorite books are Consciousness Explained by Dennett and then River Out of Eden by Richard Dawkins, because both of them are very good, concise distillations of the things they've been thinking about. And it's a really good intro. Darwin's Dangerous Idea is a great book, but it's, it's a huge tome, you know, and when you go embark upon that, you know, you're, you're ready to take a college course, you know, essentially yeah. the, the, the wonderful material in there. So, <clears throat> Brian, it's funny you should mention that, though, about uh, your dogs, because uh, tell me, tell me, tell me what kind of work your dogs do. Uh, they provide joy and companionship uh now what's interesting sounds like a couple of layabouts <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah. what's not pulling their weight uh uh so earning so, their keep <laughs> so so uh, at one point we uh 10 years ago we had some dogs that we needed to uh, uh learn how to train and um uh, the dog trainer uh understandably was really training us and not the dogs. Uh, and, and the way he expressed it is like dogs want to have a job and they want to earn their keep. So make sure that you set them up to feel that every single time. So it's like, don't just give them food instead. Uh, well, they, they will feel better about themselves <laughs> in so far as they have a themselves if you have them sit or or solve a puzzle or 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 uh but but you know i just enjoy having a soft fuzzy uh beautiful barking beast to hold <laughs> well brian i don't think you're getting the most out of your dogs to be honest with you oh no Man, oh I are we about to hear some amazing dog tales well i sent you a link uh I would say that American dynamism, we may have lost some of it. I'd like to bring it back. And we'll know a good sign of that will be when we get a reintroduction of uh, machines that are designed to be powered by dogs. Like, how would you like to churn butter with your dog? Why don't you put your dog on a treadmill, have it attached to a butter churning 
machine, mm. which somebody filed for a patent. Um, how about using your dog to power your your three wheel bicycle? You could do that. Now you know, you're put now one you're dog talking in giant giant wheels. There's a wonderful photo essay on Gizmodo uh, and a story written by Matt Novak, and just a lot of examples. Just ignore the one where there's dogs inside of a water wheel and a guy holding a whip. We don't need that. <laughs> um, you know, images of dogs like in just like wheels. You like suspended from a ceiling, turning a wheel that's turning like a roast in a fire. <laughs> like, just you, you, you wonder how much of this was for real, how much of it not. Uh, <laughs> just a, a sewing machine worked by a dog. There's just a bunch of these great examples of like this. There's a uh, 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 man, you want to talk about something that's doubly. No, here we go. We are looking at these photos now. A lot of how can we make a dog in a wheel do a thing? <laughs> this was a I genre, <laughs> a genre of like anything with a, a, a crank. Uh, uh, and we can chuck a dog in a wheel for it. Uh, uh, Main, you, you you blinked out for a second there, but but which of these is your personal favorite? Nope, he is apparently still blinking. Meanwhile, back to these wheel dogs. How about uh, a sewing machine worked by a dog? That's pretty amazing. <laughs> uh, although, no, that actually is, I mean, not, 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 to, not to pass any judgment on these particular devices, but uh, uh, I have not used that level of sewing machine, but I would imagine consistency is a real big part of it, and I don't know if a man's best friend would be able to carry that. Well, but if you had like a flywheel that was able to capture the energy and then release it at a regular rate. Oh, so it would just be what at, at, at whatever speed the dog is, is running, it is uh, continuing to move at an even pace. Uh, yeah, uh, correct. Next, next correct. one coming up here uh, in like two more slides. There you go. It's not only a modern rogue episode. A modern rogue episode. <laughs> so this is Bruno Mobile Midget Car has a uh, one dog power engine. <laughs> Remember when that word was not rude? I know. I think those are those. Is that not an automotive term still? I, I'm sure. I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah. A lot of words have changed over the lot of years. Yeah. Well, uh, 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 regardless, uh, we apologize. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. No, it's not our job to apologize for history. <laughs> Uh, history be history. <laughs> Can yeah. you go back and read that paragraph? Because it's it's a great practical starting point advice. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, uh, the paragraph says, <clears throat> youngsters. No, read it in a voice that this would be read in, like a radio play. Uh, <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen and all the ships at sea, youngsters will have great fun with this unusual Dog-powered midget auto. The design here is laid out to the correct size for a fox terrier engine. Police dogs will also require a larger wheel. A bicycle sprocket and a chain drive is used, and the larger sprocket being <laughs> used on the driving wheel shaft. The gear reduction attain obtained here allows even a small dog to propel this car at a satisfactory rate. Ball bearings made of roller skate wheels are best for supporting the cage. A satisfactory brake is easily made and will slow down the novel vehicle quickly, even though the motive power is inclined to keep running. Like, we, we live in an era where we get worried about things you might buy on, like, Alibaba or Timu or you get sold on Instagram. What a golden age of just flim flam <laughs> that these like these these magazines would come out and, and somebody would say like you can have a plane and you're like what you're 11 right you're reading boys life it's 1950 something the, the world just got out of war and you're just like I can build a plane in my backyard and then you beg your parents for 20 cents which is now two thousand dollars uh, uh, and and uh, uh, you know uh, three months later you get four pieces of plywood and a, 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 a Phillips head screwdriver and they say follow directions bye <laughs> I I once bought something from the Johnson Smith catalog that was labeled as a 40 foot long UFO uh, and I was like uh, it's 40 feet 
Yeah. 40 foot long UFO. I think it was like $5. Of course. And, yep. Uh, Checks uh, out. Uh, <laughs> and it says, imagine your neighborhood on a Sunday afternoon. Blue skies abound. And yet there is a genuine UFO. And it even says UFO on it so mm. that you know it's a UFO. Um, I, 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 I suspect... Andrew already knows what I got, but Justin, do you have a guess what I received? Uh, I assume you just kind of got a balloon? Uh, well, a balloon would be made of latex, which is expensive and needs to be inflated with helium. Yep. How about a 40-foot-long tube of garbage bag material? Oh, my God. <laughs> because... It's it's black, which means it'll accept all of the sun's heat. Yes. And as we know, things that are hot rise. Gotcha. So basically, in the backyard. You just leave it out, and eventually a gigantic garbage bag will rise from your backyard. <laughs> there, there was also... <laughs> we used to be a proper country. <laughs> uh, uh, I... Oh, go, go ahead, Andrew. I, sorry, I got... I got distracted here because I went to YouTube and I typed in dog powered machinery. Oh, oh dear. here we go. Should I, should I do the same? <laughs> Who let the dogs yes. out okay. of YouTube and into this machinery? <laughs> All right. So I'm at YouTube now. I'm typing in dog powered machinery. Uh, to, uh, uh, I uh, Dog powered machinery uh assuming our search histories are remotely similar which one would you like to see <laughs> i i i just looked at i haven't looked at any of them yet so i just was the point of discovery right now okay well here the very first one oh yeah give says, us give close, us a little close up uh, of dog powered machine let's do oh i'll tell you what now i'm in I was skeptical <laughs> before, but I'm in right now. It's straight up just, just, just a, 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 a Labrador. So what? But it, 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 it looks field. like some kind of either Renaissance Fair or Maker Festival. <laughs> but but it is a semi permanent structure that is built. This dog is running in a gigantic a hamster wheel, and it is turning something. Uh, God knows what it's doing, but it is it is certainly generating. Uh, 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 sharpening, sharpening stone. Is that it? Okay, yeah, it's like sh sharpening things. Will. Uh, and the dog looked happy. Yeah. Uh, dogs like to run. Yeah. Turns out, dogs like to move. It's almost like they were yeah. built to do that. <laughs> uh, uh, All right, on. I'm going. I'm going. So uh, uh, this one this seems is... like a, a bit more of a joke, but it's 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 very popular. <laughs> it says, "Quick." Turkey stuffing hack, dog powered. Uh oh. Uh, so uh oh. We'll, we'll, Sounds we'll, like some we'll hijinks. Uh, all right, this so is we... like a Rube Goldberg uh, situation. Okay, all right. So a machine throws some uh, carrots. There we and go. Celery. All right, I think we're there. done. Oh, yeah. that was it. I think the dog started. Yeah, the dog bumped the. Okay, that was bearing. dumb. That was bad. All that right. was bad engineering. Well, here's what's not bad, folks. Patreon.com slash weird things. Patreon.com slash weird things is where you need to go if you want to support this program. Thank you to everybody who does it. We've had, we've talked about this before. The rate of development and things coming out is just insane. Mm -hmm. And this week, uh, recapping things in tech that happened that you yep. know, we're getting a year. Every week is now a year. Um, I, I so, mean, that's that's no that's BS, facts. right? I mean, it would have taken a year in a normal tech cycle for Mark Zuckerberg to want to apply a chain uh, and make that a part of his uh, uh, public persona like he did today announcing the uh, meta AI features. Yeah, so let's talk about that for a second, is that Facebook has... Facebook consumes the second largest number of GPUs are, 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 you know, on par with Microsoft, the two biggest purchasers of GPUs in the world and I'm from like NVIDIA. And so they've been using it one, they were using it to do a lot of 3D and a lot of the rendering, a lot. A lot of other stuff. Really, really. Yeah. Well, in AI, they've been doing, they released some stuff. They've been doing open source model releases or 
sometimes the license, you know, the, 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 the licensing is kind of weird. Like you can't have more than like 700 million customers, whatever, but their llama models that they've been done have released are really, really high quality models. And they just released llama three, which on evals looks like it's close to GPT four in oh, some wow. tests and probably an old, probably an older version of GPT four. And I, and I, I, I will say, I, uh, evals are hard now. They're very, very hard because there are models that some people love and I use and I go, no, I can't do this because when I get into like, you know, why well, do a lot of code and I know sometimes the coding problems I ask are several step and layer and they won't do it, but they might do other things really well. And so we're into kind of subjective space where it's hard to say what, what are the best models for certain tasks. But this Llama 3 looks like it's a fantastic model by all accounts, the metrics, whatever. It is the clear leader, as far as we know, for open source. And mm. it's been, it's putting, sending out waves because one, they, there was a tradition, there's a method called mixture of experts, which has been used on a lot of other bigger models, which is sort of be training separate things, you know, training things separately. They didn't use that for it. Uh, we're just sort of digging into now that what they do and how they built it, but they've released a very, very incredible competitor and it's open source and you can run it on all kinds of different platforms. Yeah. Uh, uh, I saw a lot of the buzz in the AI folks that I follow were about how impressive it was and how fast it was, uh, that it was, it was extraordinarily capable. Yeah. So, you know, and that's a good on them. Um, you know, and it, it's funny is that, you know, somebody, I know at opening, I had comment, congratulate on them. And some tech reporters like, well, you know, the good, like, why don't you work at open? Why don't you release GPT four? And it's like, you mean five cool. Yeah. Like be, be, become an ad tech company. Like I understand, like it's, it's, you know, different goals, different motivations there. And there is an end goal for Zuckerberg. There is an end game here and it's not, you know, uh, def doing free stuff forever. I mean, maybe, but I think that, I think it's, it's a, it's a net good, the way that they've uh, released this, what they've done, I think it's going to benefit a lot of people. It's going to help improve AI training, et cetera, all that. But it is, it's funny where, you know, people kind of look at motives and. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, I think also uh, 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 tech journalism is broken and it's been broken for uh, a, a long time. And especially in situations like this, it just kind of demonstrates how stupid everything is. Uh, speaking of stupid, wait, 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 Brian, wait, wait. Brian, can you please look up uh, Mark Zuckerberg's announcement and just, I want your opinion on his chain. I, I, the man, the man is in his bro era. Uh, he's been training at M M uh, MMA, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a while. Oh dear! And Bro Zuckerberg is here, and I gotta tell you, I'm here for it. I'm here for Bro Zuckerberg. Bro Zuckerberg can't hurt you. Oh my God! I thought this was a not him. I I thought I was watching just a crap uh, 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 TikToker. Uh, uh, but I didn't have quite enough time hold to on. go out and get a T-shirt. We are releasing a new version of Meta AI. Our assistant, Jesus. Patrick Cassidy. Just go, throw it, throw it up there. Throw it up so right. everybody can see it. And our goal <laughs> is to build the world's leading AI and make it available to everyone. He looks bigger, this though. Is, I wouldn't have these are half the guys that I had to go pitch ideas to in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> I know. There, there is this... this Weird uh, 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 thing, you know, uh, Bezos got jacked, Zuckerberg's getting jacked. I mean, when 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 Larry and Sergey start doing like one of those uh, uh, Cirque du Soleil routines where they lift each other up with one hand, uh, <laughs> it's over for all of us. I, I between that and the New Zealand bunkers, it's like they know something. Yeah. <laughs> like they're getting That's ready for Mad cool Max. Plot. Like, I, yeah, I mean, I, this is, I am looking into the eyes of somebody who wants to sell me a health supplement. <laughs> like, it's really weird. I got to say, upgrade. Upgrade, though. Like, I mean, we're, we're, we're joking because he's a very famous person, but I think he looks a lot better than, 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 his, than his old look. Yeah. It's, you know, the hair's grown out a bit. Like, yeah, I think, uh, you know. Uh, he does look like a teenage he, drug dealer with the thin uh, silver the, chain. I, I, the chain was the only thing that I was going to comment <laughs> upon. I was like, uh, that's a choice. That's a choice he made. <laughs> it's like you're reaching in uh, uh, to the drawer. You see the puka shells. You see the, 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 the thin <laughs> silver. And you're like, <laughs> the, bear, uh, the bear claws. Exactly. Let's, <laughs> let's save the puka shells for the weekend. This is a business uh, uh, situation. Let me go ahead and grab the silver chain. My chest hair growing supplement <laughs> will allow you to go three buttons down and the ladies to see how hairy you are. Uh, but, but, uh, so, so, uh, right now, uh, 
Maine, you are, you know, you, you have the uh, uh, pulse of this a lot more. The, the, the Llama 3 buzz is all very good. Yeah, Llama, the, so far, people are just starting to dig into it, and but it's being deployed. Um, you know, it's already on access. You can try it now. You can go to, you can use it on Meta's website. You can interact with it. Replicate.com, which is my favorite place now to play with different models. Um, I think they've deployed it. Um, Grok Q, you know, Grok with the Q company, you know, they're, you know, I think they're going to be adding it. So we're just seeing a lot of deployment for it. So, um, you know, it's just, it's another capability. Now it's a big, 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 big model. It's really, really big, but you know, it seems, seems very capable for the size of it. So pretty amazing. So yeah, and, and like I said, these, and it will happen as people will start to fine tune these, train them on different things, et cetera. Um, you know, uh, did I, did I show you before on replicate.com the image generator and how fast it can generate like multiple images in a second? Yes. Yeah. No, la yeah, la last, yeah. last week you showed yeah. us, uh, 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 just insanely fast. Yeah. That what? this is, there's one that will take multiple prompts. Like, so you can give it like five different prompts, click it and I'll just start spitting them out. This stuff is just moving crazy fast. Uh, Boston Dynamics announced that they were retiring their Atlas robot. That was their pneumatic robot. Um, and But then they unveiled a new Atlas, which I sent Brian a link to. And uh, who's ready to see the thing that the last thing you see before you get murdered? Uh, okay, all right, hold on. I uh, Unfortunately, I, I have multiple browsers, and not all of them are logged into the same thing at the same time. Let me see if this one is... Logged into my account uh, because that's the one that'll let me. Uh, uh, while, while, while Brian is doing that, uh, Maine, the uh, uh, wh where are we at now at Boston Dynamics? They, they were spun out by Google, right? And and now they are a fully independent operation. I think I think Google may have invested in them. Okay, um, they're now they're owned by Hyundai. Oh, okay, so gotcha. Yeah, they had. I'm, I'm looking up their Wikipedia to look at that. Uh, they were acquired by X. They, that was that because like they had started independently, and then Google's X division had bought them. Gotcha. And then uh, by management Andy Rubin, and then they uh, sold it to SoftBank. Okay. And then then Hyundai bought them. Uh, so it was basically they've had kind of an interesting record. And my assessment of the company is this: is that it is a very hard to building a thing is hard enough to then figure out how you're going to take the thing and mass produce it. And I think that was the problem that they yeah. faced was the like spot and Atlas. These things were amazing. But then if you say, okay, how do I build a hundred thousand of them? Well, you can't build it the same way you built your prototype because that's ridiculously expensive. You know, and for an example right now, you know, the, the truck company Rivian, yeah. you know, the electric vehicle company, I think Rivians are beautiful vehicles. People who have them love them. Rivian spends almost twice as much per vehicle as they sell them for. Wow. Their, really? Their They're underwater? Do, oh, very. Their, their projections, and not financial advice, not an expert, please look to your own, but they do not look good because they've they've had to discount they've done some things like changing you know like out changing battery pack like specifications but it's the same battery pack to try to lower the price they've announced they've got a new vehicle they're going to come out with because i think they've realized they're just too at the high end of the class there's just not enough you know consumers for that but there's the concern like that you guys can't build this thing at this cost yeah or are you going to be able to do that at the other thing and i i wish them well i want them to succeed but they're facing that problem of you know you need you need a genius, a mad genius, if you will, when it comes to your supply chain. Yeah. And it comes to all these other factors like Elon Musk uh, is, I think, can be a crazy person. But you put him in a Name factory. One example. Say, one example. Really? Uh, maybe I'm overstepping. You're right. I'm sorry. Uh, you put him into a factory and you say, how do we make it more efficient? And he will change everything and sometimes go, whoops, that was a mistake. Then yeah. go back. But he has been a very much a contrarian about stuff, but I think consistently has been right. Apple, we've talked about this before. Who runs Apple? Tim Cook. Tim what Cook. Tim Cook do? Tim, yeah, supply chain guy. Supply yeah, chain. and, and that's, we... you know, one of our favorite to stay on Apple for a second, but I know for, for me and you, uh, Andrew, the, you know, the, the Steve Jobs quote of like real artist ship, uh, 
part of that is not only just it finishing it and getting it out into the public, but getting it out into the public for a company like Apple at a price point for which they are comfortable, they make a good margin, and yet it feels like a luxury item that is worth the amount of money that the end customer pays for it. That is an art. Like that, that is something, especially when you are moving at the units that, that some of these companies that we're talking about on uh, are, uh, it's, it's huge. And, and it's even more pressure when you are dealing with a vehicle, oftentimes the most expensive purchase that somebody's going to make in their life next to a house. And what we've seen, what we've seen with a lot of the, bo particularly like the Boston dynamic spot robot which looks really cool but uh, again i last i checked it was like a hundred thousand dollars but you get other companies come in and then you know chinese companies will go in and they will make way 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 cheaper versions of that and so what happens is that uh you know if you you go well you know do i do i have a use for this uh unitree has their spot knockoff um there's just a number of like then that's a challenge is you've got to figure out how to manufacture these things at scale and if you can't do that, you're going to be stuck where it's going to be really, really hard for you to find your market. So like Unitree has their version of like Spot came out. It was something like $100,000. Unitree has a $2,500 version of that. Um, another company, robotics company. And so uh, I, 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 I finally figured out which browser was logged into my account. Um, uh, so we have we have. A video that appears to look like Atlas laying down dead, or uh, the new one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Let's All right. play. Let's take a look. And and uh, hold on for 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 audio listeners before the video starts playing, uh, Atlas looks very humanoid, uh, but but not with the gigantic uh, uh, upper body that you had seen with previous Boston Dynamic robots. This one just looks uh, extraordinarily. Uh, uh, Looks more like human. a triathlete. Yeah, there we go. With a headlight for a head. Yes. Yeah. Oh, poor robots laying on the ground dead. Oh, oh, oh my wait, god! What? Oh my god! So it is now. It, it it its legs went backwards, and then its entire torso oh has turned around. <laughs> is, are they on purpose trying to get more horrific? Creepy, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Holy walking moly. <laughs> so because so a couple of things here. So for audio listeners, the, the what made the robot interesting is because the limbs can kind of rotate, the legs can rotate, the arms can rotate. It's laying like looks like it maybe it's laying face down. Yeah. And to pick itself up, the legs just curl back over in a very inhuman thing. And then it turns into a squat and lifts up. And then the head spins around and each leg just separately rotates to spin around to face forward. And it looks uh the walk look at the walking gate for a moment of the while we still get that. Yeah, it uh, uh, the it, the walking gate is a little bit herky jerky, but but every other oh, move was but very compare precise. that to, but look at the upright. It is more C three PO yeah. and less old hunched over man. Yeah, that's phenomenal. How how much of that is attributable? If, if we're going to speculate to, let's say, power of batteries, power of computing, all of that stuff. Um, it is. Computing, it is how you position your servo motors. So that the problem of walking fully upright is that the amount of balance that it takes, and so that is that is a compute thing, and also sensitivity to understand. You know, uh, one of the things it's like that makes uh, the drone industry and everything else we you know is possible is basically signal processing and being able to get your data on, on basically where what's the position of your motor right now? Are you falling over? How do you compensate? And if you don't have enough of a, you measure things like in frequency range, like if you don't get enough information within a span of time about your balance, then it's really hard to correct. That's one of the things that made, you know, drones possible was with way better chips because of the development of cell phones and stuff is they could process millions of things per second. So they could very precisely understand, you know, what their, you know, uh, what their axis was and that they were trying to go one way or the other and then adjust the motor control and do this. So these things all play into a factor. Uh, it's all happening very quickly. <laughs> and it's only going to happen fast. I know. <laughs> it, it, and some shade has been thrown because we've talked about figure AI, which uses uh, GPT-4 vision inside their robot. Yep. 
and somebody had pointed out the hip, the the joint between the chest and the waist here uses this very interesting sort of like uh, kind of gimbal arrangement. And uh, the figure has said, hey, that's ours. We patented it. <laughs> and so Uh-oh. we'll see what happens with that. Robot Wars. Well, yep. and, and uh, oh, my God, uh, uh, robot uh, patent wars weren't fun. Uh, robot wars are sometimes fun, but robot patent wars where everybody's able to research everything going back to the beginning of time. And, and uh, because as we know, a patent is you don't actually have to make a dang thing. All you have to do is say, I had an idea and I have enough money to register this. Yep. Yep. And that's. Part of what happens is that you put together your patent portfolio, not so that you're going to litigate against other people, but it's to protect you if somebody tries to go against you. And because what will happen is, you know, maybe, you know, Apple might do a thing and Google's going to be like, well, you did this thing, we did that. And then Apple's like, yeah, but you did this thing and we have a patent for that. And that's often sort of what happens. People will buy into patent portfolios to protect themselves from you know basically other that's one of the you know the kind of the purpose they've become now um and it is interesting too is that like you know providing you know that kind of protection is you know essential i think patents provide an incredible advantage though because if you're a smaller inventor or smaller developer first to market just doesn't work you know and and you know if you want to go show a company your thing and they go, cool, bro, we're taking it. You can you can ask them to sign NDAs and stuff like that. But by the time you try to litigate your way out of it, it's hard. So I I, I am a believer, like I do believe in patents that are properly scoped or very useful. And, and scoping is critical there too. I'll tell you what, we are watching this now in slow motion. It is fascinating. It yeah. is, it is yeah. just truly, truly remarkable. And uh, uh, Maine, I know you are a big, big, big believer in the robot age which we are entering into and specifically how much ai can supercharge that uh, uh, i would uh, imagine that something like that happens with models like these that are brought to a level that are replicatable in terms of cost well yeah like we we mentioned before and about the the fact that it's can be very hard to put things into uh mass production and i'm going to send you link up brian a link here to uh unitry which uh i would say that maybe have they may have been getting a lot of inspiration from boston dynamics but also illustrates that it's one thing to be able to build a thing it's another thing to actually start being able to mass product mass manufacture it and i think that we're we saw that with like the segue okay yeah right. segue was hey we have this really cool self balance technology we're going to try to revolutionize the world with these things and other people looked at it and said cool but what if i got rid of the handle and put it into a little thing and we have a hoverboard you know right. we have those things and and kids with baggy jeans can you know ride those around and tear and break their collarbones and, yeah or mark exactly. zuckerberg's then, new outfit yep and then you get like from there like the mono wheel i've seen those things still amaze me when you see those things flying around. i so still don't often, understand how people use them to be totally honest with you i am i am that i am that old as as i understand it, it's it's pretty much just a, a, a snowboard which uh is also dangerous uh but <laughs> <laughs> you're not making uh if you scroll down to um, there's a video on the, yeah, if you scroll down, you'll see the video of them doing the kicking the robot, which they're, they remember, they're remembering all this. <laughs> oh yeah. They, they, this they. is the, this is the Unitry H1. It's $150,000. Um, it does not have hands. It just has basically things to punch you in the face with. You can buy now with the PayPal button. If you want to get one, uh, you, there, anybody with $150,000 sitting around in PayPal. <clears throat> yep. And so, uh, I don't know what you'd use it for. Yeah, you know, uh, that, uh, well, I mean, maybe, maybe, uh, uh, if you were creating a robot football league, you, you could have like a linebacker for only, linebacker. yeah, for only a few million dollars, you can field a robot, two robot football teams that <laughs> can uh, play against each other. Now, if you go back and you look at the Unitry Go Two, which is their version of a robot, the robot dog, and that starts at sixteen hundred bucks. Oh and, wow, cheap price to move. Yeah, and that was compare that to when Spot came out and how expensive that was. And I don't know, 
I have no idea how capable this was of this, you know, what, what, how good they are, whatever. Wait, $1,600? What's that? Yeah. $1,600 for, mm-hmm. for a dog robot. Yeah. You love dogs, Brian. What about a dog oh, robot? Oh, Brian, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Keep scrolling. Okay. All right. Keep going. Keep going. They're free Keep for YouTubers? <laughs> what? <Keep going>. Joking. <laughs> Keep going. Oh Keep my going. god. Keep going. There we go. Oh, it's a companion to run by you. Boy, that yeah, is Yeah, they show a guy out running in a park and the robot's running next to him. Uh, if you want to simultaneously scream douche and wealthy, this is this is the $1600 investment for you. What if you had yeah, a little a little cooler on it or something, and you were handing out? Now they out show the thing avoiding. Drinks. I mean, that's it. They show the thing avoiding obstacles like yeah. trees, etc. Um, I would say that these systems are very capable. They have lidar. They're able to look around. When you start, what, why I keep saying we're on the verge of a robot revolution? When you start taking some of these really highly capable language models and pairing them with these systems, and some of the stuff they're going to be able to build on board. Um, cause you could build, yeah, you, know, you could take a tinier, smaller, like, you know, AI model, like a seven B, like a seven billion parameter, which can fit in like eight gigs, put that on board there and talk to it as you run and yeah. have it play your music and do whatever, have it walk around the house and be able to do things like this is happening, folks. Like you're going to see way more robotics, way more places now because of the advancements in robots and now LLMs. Like, oh my like gosh. All, all, all the ingredients are here. Oftentimes when we've had conversations like this, it has been contingent upon a breakthrough or many breakthroughs. Uh, where we've, we've got everything that you would need to cook up something really, really interesting. And, and that's what's fascinating about it. The idea yeah, of, and, of, and- of, of talking... Uh, to your assistant, your robot assistant, while you're on a jog is fascinating. Like the idea to be say uh, to like, Hey, uh, uh, remind me uh, what's the schedule for today, next week. Just, yeah. I mean, basically it would be what you would do with chat GPT for on your phone right now, right? Which you talk to all the time. It's just a little robot dog that, that, uh, uh, wanders around with you. Oh my God! Gotta go. Go back to the front. Go look at their version. The Unitree B2, which is expensive. It's it's like a hundred thousand dollars. It's another quadruped, um, and the videos on that are insane and also terrifying. Uh, go uh, to or, or B true B2. B2. The B2. Yeah, okay. The B2. All right. Scroll All right. Down. So this right, one's so this is a hundred thousand dollars. Uh oh, man! This one's more like a lynx instead of a dog. It's super. It's very fast. They show an example of it going upstairs and somebody pulling on a rope to try to stop it from doing that. Navigating an environment filled with banana peels. How they say it's the fastest running industrial grade quadruped, six meters per second. And then we get examples of it jumping from uh, one spot to another. Uh, oh, uh, did you see the jumping example? I think it's a, back, a little higher up there. Okay. Um, Next one up. Oh, there, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 a full meter. Oh, my God. Jump. Yeah. It looks so... Jumping it look, it, from a platform to a staircase or jumping from platform to the ground. It looks like a video game, the way that the, yeah. the uh, uh, legs move, because it, it is perfection. I mean, you're going to... And like I said, we saw the smaller versions... You're going to get like, would I pay, you know, five grand to have a thing that patrolled my house, you know, or it, it, it you know, and then during the day and then at night it went outside. I yeah. mean, considering what you paid for your coffee machine. Sure. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my yeah. Apple vision pro, like the, the other one was, you know, I could have got that for instead of my Apple vision pro. I could have got, could have got a robot and terrify the neighbor kids. Yeah. Well, yeah, at the very least you could terrify the coyotes that well, are hanging around. Yeah. I know. I know. I know what uh, somebody's getting for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, kind of, kind of fast paced guys. Uh, I'm going to close with one more thing. We're going to take a dive into the past. Okay. Scientists have found a new fossil, which may be the largest what? Uh, they found it oh. in a mine in India. The largest elephant. Yeah, I was going to say land mammal. Um, a 
It's on land, not a mammal. Okay. Largest, what, uh, a, a lizard? Wait, a fossil. Is it, is, it, is it like the world's largest bug of all time? No. Is it the world's largest uh, tree? No, it's got to be an animal. Does it? Um, well, I think so. Does um, it have to be an animal, Andrew? It is an animal. Okay. Animal. Uh, and it's not a man. Uh, world's largest marsupial? No. This thing lived about 47 million. This specimen, they believe, lived 47 million years ago. World's largest bird? No. Cow? <laughs> I guess that'd be a man. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm fresh out of guesses. What, what was it? So this is a new species of snake. Oh, dear God. It's been too long. It's always snakes. Too long. It's always yeah. snakes. Wait, uh, how, how, hey, Justin. How you did, we forgot what snakes, show we guys. were on. <laughs> I know. It's been too long. We, we, we've been too head down on AI for too many weeks. So uh, we don't know when the species went extinct or did it, but this specimen, they think it may have been as long as 50 feet, which would be longer than Titanoboa, which is the, you know, the, the record holding in, you know, monsters. Yeah. So uh, this is, you know, kind of, kind of cool, kind of terrifying. It's only Guess 50 feet folks. longer than uh, Brian's UFO. Uh, uh, no, that is that is extraordinarily terrifying, and that that was found uh, just recently in India. The spot, yeah, the, the vertebrae, yeah. Good how Lord. how uh, uh, is there an indication of how uh, thick it was? Like, are we talking tree trunk or or how big, wide? Uh, what was the girth on that? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, and I, I think that you know there is sort of like there is a factor there. Largest specimen of a reticulated python that living that we ever caught was uh, 33 feet, which is insane. Very, very I mean, long. There is 33 foot long, longer than the somewhere. studio that we're in. Good. Yeah. Uh, Great. So. Uh, we'll see. We'll see yeah. what if they find more examples of that. Uh, got any picks, boys? I do. I do. Uh, oh, oh, you go, go ahead. First. Go ahead, main. Yeah, I'm gonna do uh, "Consciousness Explained" by Daniel Dennett. That's my pick. "Consciousness Explained" by Daniel Dennett. Uh, oh. uh, I'm currently halfway through the book. Uh, you, you remember a week or two ago, I suggested "Super Communicators," and uh, in casual conversation, somebody brought up um, "Never Split the Difference." a book mm -hmm. written by a former FBI hostage negotiator. And uh, it's one of those books where, you know, it matches your intuitions, just like uh, super communicators, but, but provides concrete examples. Although instead of being in academia, they come from horrifying tales of people who have been abducted. And uh, it, it, there's one vignette where he realized like his breakthrough moment uh, the the old FBI playbook would be somebody claims to have so and so kidnapped. So you would ask a question that only they would know. Like you know, if my wife was kidnapped, the question might might be, uh, uh, "Who was the write this down, everybody? Uh, write this down, uh, everybody. Uh, uh, who was the first dog that we shared together that passed away?" And then she would correctly identify the name of the dog. And it's like, okay, which well, was, now, now we know. Which was. <laughs> uh, but the um. Uh, but there was one moment where he uh, was passed on a tape that somebody kind of sent as a lark because it's like, ha, they didn't even call us. Listen to this hot garbage. But he was like, okay, whatever. And he listened to it and he noticed that they did something that uh, normally would be very costly in a hostage negotiation. He got the person or she got the kidnappee on the phone and he was like, well, that's normally something that takes something uh, to get to. And uh, quite simply, uh, uh, whereas like FBI had a playbook, 
She just asked, well, how do I know you even have him? And there's a pause of about 10 seconds. And then the kidnapper is like, well, let me put him on the phone because that was the best thing he could think of. And uh, uh, those opportunities, those open-ended questions allow for, uh, number one, it makes your job their job and uh, uh, wears them down and gets them closer to, or likewise, somebody might say, uh, I got so-and-so, I want a million dollars. And instead of saying, I can't do that or whatever, you, you answer with the open-ended question, how am I supposed to do that? And now you've taken their problem and kicked it right back to them. And now they're doing your work for you. And uh, in hostage negotiation, apparently it's all about just time, just time. Time's all that matters. Mm. Uh, uh, it's, it's a very good book. I, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, my, my pick is yeah. uh, 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 going to be Shogun again. It's good. Watch the, uh, the most recent episode last night. Still a good show. Looking forward to the finale. Oh, boy. I'll tell you what. Uh, nothing has given the Game of Thrones vibes, like the good Game of Thrones vibes, including the Game of Thrones spinoff, uh, uh, better than the Shogun. Cool. I, on the... The never split the difference. Like that book's been highly recommended. I'm looking forward to reading it. But when I read, when I see a title like that, I always wonder, like, man, like, what's that person like to have to deal with in real life? Oh, you know. constantly asking <laughs> what and how questions, <laughs> answering yeah. questions. With it's like, uh, 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 well, uh, hey, could you take out the garbage? Is like. What is it about taking out the garbage that's so important to you? <laughs> it's like, it's because I don't want the garbage in my house, sweetheart. And it's like, how would you feel if the garbage stayed here? <laughs> in my books, whenever I try to figure out, like, what would a clever criminal do? You, you have to think through a lot of these situations. And you'd say, okay, like, knowing that what, like, I have a scene in a book um, that just came out with there's like a hostage situation or maybe a hostage situation. And how does a, you know, how do the negotiators like do that? How do they get by for time, get that person to do this, to figure out that, do the wear the person down. But if somebody is very smart on the other side of it, you know, one of the things is it's like, Hey, uh, I want $1 million, you know, in four hours, you know, I've got, if you have more to, if you have more to negotiate, if you have one person where well, you can kill one person, you have several people, then you have more to bargain with. And if you're like, hey, yeah, in one hour, the first body gets pushed out the window. I'm breaking my phone and throwing it away right now. You can't get hold of me. <laughs> and right. then that puts it back in the negotiator because now they're in a position like, oh, shoot, we can't talk to them. Now we have, will they or won't they do that? And that, not to advise anybody if they want to get into a hostage situation. Well, and, and, and keep in mind, this particular book is sort of a rejection of uh, the getting to yes model, which was the previous uh, uh, best practices, mm -hmm. where it's just like get them saying yes, 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 yes. Uh, would you like to not be beat up? Yes. Would you like to... Uh, get away yes yes whatever it's like would you like to walk outside right now yes uh and uh, uh instead he poses interesting questions like um uh, uh the power of getting them to say no phrasing a question like uh uh, uh uh would you ever compromise on this and they're like no never and then you know after a few of those they create kind of a mental uh uh, uh cell that they've trapped themselves in where it's like, well, if you don't like any of those things, then I think morally sounds like what you really want to do is, is be reasonable. And then I, I, I'll give one more tidbit from it. He, he points out that there's uh, counterfeit yeses and real yeses and a third type of yes that I won't talk about, but the, uh, uh, a counterfeit yes, Forbidden yes. is <laughs> the counter crypt crypto coin. Yes. The, 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 the counterfeit yes, the is, band yes, is what we do to just make people go away. Uh, so it's like, uh, Brian, you ought to work out. And I'd say, you're right. And what I'm saying is, I'd like to not talk about this. Exactly. Whereas you might well, that say, that was in Japan. Uh, I, I, as a matter of fact, I, I believe he mentions that in there. Uh, the, the, the real, uh, uh, the real yes 
is when we have a conversation about how much I value my health or how much the benefits are. And then we get to a place where finally you say, well, it sounds like you need to work out. And then I don't say you're right. I say, that's right. So the difference mm -hmm. is that's right versus you're right. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, it's, yeah. it's a good book. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just a little code on there. It was, yeah, when I was in Japan, I had to realize, had to always understand when yes meant yes or yes just meant you've made your point. We, we, we in theory, we're going to say yes. Yeah. But that's not a yes. <laughs> and, and, um, and part of that, too, I realize is often the person you're talking to doesn't have the authority to make that decision or wants more time to make it. And that was just like, okay, when is yes actually a yes? Yeah. Uh, it's a, it, yes. it's a good book. I, I look forward to yes. hearing your take on it. Uh, yeah. uh, well, neither of you said that's right, but whatever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah. Hey. Gentlemen, it's been weird. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. I, 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 I do have, moment. I do have to pee real quick, yeah. but but we could barrel through uh, and keep going with after. Uh, this one, uh, uh, should I put on some music or, or just let Mark Zuckerberg talk? I think I'm alone. I think everybody went to the bathroom. Yep. I'm alone. Here's Mark Zuckerberg talking for four minutes. Our assistant that you can ask any question across our apps and glasses. And our goal is to build the world's leading AI and make it available to everyone. I wouldn't have quite enough time for me to go out and get a t-shirt and a chain to match Zuck's look there. That was Mark Zuckerberg introducing the company's new AI assistant. I can only imagine how much the quality of the comments on Instagram are going to go up as a result of this. Dan Halley joins us now to discuss. Um, all right, I know that we'll get into the llama name later, I guess. What's the TLDR on, on the rest of Zuckerberg's uh, little spiel that he had there? For, uh, for looking users. very bro-y. I'll just throw it out he's, there. I mean, he is in a, he is in a bro moment. He's yeah. full bro mode, like, he MMA. Is, he's going for it. Like bro era. I, you know, before I had $50 billion or yes, whatever, yes. I couldn't do this and now I'm just now I get to, full yeah. send. I'm cool like everyone else, yeah. even though I'm richer than everyone. Yeah. Okay, so this, uh, <laughs> what we really are talking about is uh, basically they're rolling out the latest version of their large language model that they have. Uh, it's called Llama 3. Uh, and they're putting it into what they have called Meta AI, which is basically their AI chatbot that they have across all of their services, whether it's Instagram, Messenger, Facebook, Blue, uh, proper Facebook is what, uh, and WhatsApp. And uh, you may have seen it already. It'll show up in the top right corner of the screen. Uh, they also have Meta.ai, a website where you can chat with this bot uh, and then basically ask it what you want. They say that it's basically an, all, an all-purpose bot. Uh, they're open sourcing this. Uh, open source is good because that means, generally good, because that means that it can be vetted easily and people can kind of go through it and see where the issues and errors are. Uh, and it's, it's, yeah, it's right, yeah, I got it in the top corner of my screen. Um, it's, it's interesting that they're doing this, that they're getting into these kinds of general yeah. AI chatbot because when I think of general AI bots, I would think search, right? So I don't know how that really fits into me liking pictures of pancakes. Like, yeah, I mean, I guess I guess my thought on this is, well, one, since they have all the content that's on all of their different family of apps, there's no issue there about using that content mm -hmm. to feed the language model. So you have that lack of conflict. Now, obviously, the volume is not as large as like the whole internet, which is what Google is going for. Well, it's still um, pretty big. It's not nothing. It's definitely not nothing. And I also wonder, Hallie, is the ability for Meta to, to use tech parlance, dog food, all the different ways that it could actually be useful for users, do they have a faster feedback mechanism than some other companies who are hoping users at a large enough volume use certain features to then see what the utility is? Whereas here, you know, I'm a small business owner. I have an Instagram page. I'm selling a thing. I'm going to say I'll, AI will use my interactions with customers, et cetera, et cetera. It works. It doesn't. And then you do that tens of thousands, millions. It works. It doesn't. That's a, that's yeah. a good sales pitch. Andrew, are you back? 
I am back, Brian. Okay. And I, better than, I don't have a gold chain, though, so uh, I'm not millions of dollars. Uh, I was, uh, like, both of, both you and Justin got up and went to the bathroom, and I was, and not knowing what else to do, I said, here's Mark Zuckerberg talking. <laughs> oh, I heard, I heard everything. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys ready to go after? <laughs> yep. All right. Here we go. Three, two. One. Hello and welcome to the After Things podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. And Mr. Brian Brushwood. Uh, hi. Howdy. Howdy. I so like howdy. I get asked by people in my head, uh, you know, hey, Andrew, uh, how do you keep up with all this AI stuff? How do you mm. how do you keep track of everything that's going on? Yeah, and it's a really good question. Voice in my head, and the I know I actually generally get this. And the problem is, is that things move very very fast. And if you're going to rely on tech reporters to tell you what's going on, I'm sorry, not not the all the cool stuff I know about now hits weeks, months, sometimes never gets picked up by tech reporters because it's just, you know, they, they have enough to try to keep track of all that. So uh, several ways to do it. One is, you know, algorithms are your friend. The more stuff you dive into, and let's say YouTube or Twitter that are, is, let's say, AI related, whatever, you'll see a lot more stuff pop up in your feed and you start to see stuff. And then you start to follow certain people or just, you know, I follow certain companies, certain people, you start to see what's going on there. You know, there are, you know, you can start putting together lists to keep track of these things, which is helpful. Um, another thing is to really is to talk to people. Like a lot of the cool stuff I know about is because somebody else I know who's into AI says, hey, this is really cool. And, um, you know, sharing stuff like, uh, you know, I was I played with Suno a little bit. And then you guys shared, you know, the, the songs by uh, Obscurist Vinyl. And it's like, oh, cool. I'm going to go do a little rabbit hole, go back and look at Suno. And like, oh, yeah, there's a lot more stuff here. And then that left led me to Udio, you know, and all of a sudden, oh, look at Udio. You know, they've got some cool stuff here. And then I had a friend who told me about Replicate.com. And I'm like, oh, what's that? And that's a place where they have a ton of different models. And so I, I really advise everybody listening, go to Replicate.com to go play. And because what you can do there is they have image generation models, they have text models, they have music models. A lot of the companies you see that come out with stuff, some of them are really just wrappers for open source models, stuff yeah. that's already out there. And here you can just go play with these playgrounds. You can play with these things, generate images, do text to video, create stuff, and you can you know try them and then decide later on if you're going to pay some company to build a wrapper around for it when really you don't need that. I mean, there are some companies with really good in, innovative stuff there. So I am a big believer in constantly playing. And, and uh, you know, one of, there's a person who works for Replicate who makes a lot of really cool, like, image models, like my favorite fast image generation model and other stuff. And I just go like, oh, what is this person released? What is this? So, you know, when it comes to AI models, there's a guy called The Bloke. When a new AI model comes out, He'll go create some fine-tuned, faster version of it. So, uh, I, it, it sounds like what you're saying is a little bit reminiscent of I don't know. Let's say late aughts, the way programmers would quietly talk about GitHub, where it's like, yeah, we all just borrow from each other on GitHub. Well, I, I don't or know. To, to, to me, a lot of it is, especially in terms of the application, it reminds me very much of the dawn of kind of websites. Like like in in the '90s when you'd be like, oh my god, have you heard of this cool new website? It's a website, but it talks about movies, or it's a website, but it talks about this kind of thing. It, and you you saw like that freshness. Same thing with apps of like like oh, I just got an app for doing this or doing that, and and we're we're solving all these problems based on it. You're you're now seeing that at such a supercharged rate. Uh, uh, literally any problem that can be solved. Like we're, we're not even at the point where everything's being solved by great products. We're at the point where everybody has the same clay and you can just see what you can do with it. Yeah. There's a website I would recommend. It's it's, it can, it tends to be very technical, but really is a good idea. A place to see trends. And that is hacker news. It's news.ycombinator.com. So Y Combinator is a, uh, 
basically a startup incubator in some of the biggest companies you've heard of, Stripe, Airbnb, et cetera, came out of Y Combinator, but they created their own news feed where people post stories and in, in tech to make it to the front page of Hacker News is like the big thing. And so you can see some of the top stories there. So still from uh, Daniel Dennett passing away is the top story there. When Facebook launched Llama yesterday, that was the thing there. Sometimes just scanning this is really helpful. And you go like a lot of this may seem like what the hell do these things even mean? And then I understand most of the people here don't understand what everything means. And then you sometimes read the things and people with a lot of really things to say don't actually know what these things mean. Well, so and, like, uh, but there but, is that. But but luckily we have a disambiguator where it's like I could ask my BFF Chatty G. I could say I'm reading an article on Y Combinator that says JEP draft exception handling in Switch. Can you read that article and try to speak to what that means in layman's terms? And you know, it's it's never been easier to to immediately get to at least partially understanding things. Yeah, exactly. And and I think that the there is jokes kind of about hacker news where sometimes it is a lot of neck beardy kind of responses and stuff. And 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 like my favorite one is still, you know, the somebody complaining about all the talk about AI models and they can't wait for it to go away like crypto, you know, and, and it's oh, dear. like, okay, yeah. dear. Uh, it I, was, got, I got bad uh, news for you, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, is this a real person? And I read this thread, it's like, yeah, they're just always, and you get a lot of that. And that's that's a thing where you kind of have to learn to, anytime t they talk about something you, you're familiar with, it's just it's a little frustrating. So, well, and, and, uh, and we've, we've talked about this before. It's what Michael Crichton labeled the uh, Murray Gellman effect, where uh, Murray Gellman is, is an expert in, I think it was uh, evolution or something. Um, and uh, he reads a New York Times article in his field of expertise and is like, this is utter and complete hogwash. This person has no idea what they're talking about. It's total garbage. Turns page. Oh, well, this sports person really seems to know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah, that, that becomes, uh, I had, uh, I, I read something that's, you know, fun coming out about AI and it was just very much a frustrating experience because, um, there was no technical expertise anywhere in there and what they did, the ones were the most opinionated, just completely bungled the facts. Like literally not just, I disagree with their opinion, like literally just factually incorrect and it gets frustrating. So, but it's yeah. a great, but I say hacker news is a great resource. Um, you know, and, and it's a great example too of like, I forget what it is. The there's the, the law and the joke meme is it's like, you know, the, uh, the best way to get a correct answer is to state something incorrectly, Murphy's law. And it's, you know, and somebody yeah. does know that's like bad, which some, some others law, <laughs> like, you know, and it's like, it's like, yeah, and Hacker News is a great place for that. <laughs> like you know, the, tell, the, tell, if, if what you want is more information, the sweetest words are, well, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, nobody can solve this, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, why can't, you know? And that's sometimes like when I'm looking for like tricky sorts of things in there, like that is because like I like that too. Like that's kind of how I got my job at opening eye. People are like, oh no, we can't prompt that. That can't be done. Like, oh well, I'll show you. Really? You know? And then somebody behind the scenes just going, okay, just tell Andrew it can't be done. <laughs> you know, and then tap into his insecurities and need to prove himself and we'll, you know, leverage that. Uh hey, I I I got a question. Shoot. Um, this is a safe space. Uh, what happens since, you know, we like to talk and support independent creators. Mm -hmm. What happens when your obligations increase uh, uh, financially? Like, like hypothetically, I'm just pulling these out of the air. Like, like uh, you're doing well. And then all of a sudden, let's say, a daughter of yours is now going to one of the most expensive universities in the state of Texas, or hypothetically you're doing well. And then you are about to have obligations to take care of a loved one that you weren't expecting uh, or didn't know you would be expecting a year ago. How, how, uh, and, and I guess a, a real life example is, uh, you know, Andrew, uh, you, 
you got married and all of a sudden the rules change a little bit. How, how should an independent creator think about these things? Well, if you have a backup fake identity, you know you can dip out if you ever go need. back, go some, back, go back some cash yeah. you put away. Press the reset you know, and, button. And it, you know, you used to do twenty bucks at a time here and there. You notice a little bit, but then yeah. you got a pile, and so then you, that gives you a sense of security. You're like, this doesn't work. Trust me, out. just fly to Fort Myers. It's twenty percent of the population. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I, one of the things that I do, and, and I try to leverage the fact that I'm forgetful and lazy, okay? So you can either, they either can be superpower weaknesses, or in my opinion, they can be strengths. I'll give you a couple examples. A um, long time ago, uh, I decided to use the app Acorns, right? Which like rounds up every time you make a purchase, it rounds up, puts it into an account, it's there. Um, I then forgot I had acorns, right? Never realized, never noticed it was working there. And then, you know, it was years ago, but like one day I'm like, man, I'm short money this month. I'm like, what do I need to do? And then I'm like, oh, wait, I've got an acorns account with several thousand dollars in it just sitting there that, oh, I can just use that. Um, I have... I have several different like little tiny investment accounts that like I put into like I had when I worked at OpenAI, you know, I had part of that was like they had like an investment thing and I just got my, you know, here's the statement on this thing and it's this Vanguard fund, but it's handled by this broker. I'm like, cool, I'm going to put this in a place where if my wife needs to find it because something happens to me, she can have it. But other than that, I'm not going to think about this. Like yeah. I'm, I'm going to and, and, and I'm saying that's that's a habit to start is to do little things to put things a one away, whatever. Um, I very much measure things in time. I very much measure purchases, things like this, like that. Uh, I use the Apple card. So every time our Apple card's used, I get a notification. And sometimes my wife has to buy things for the house or whatever. I get a bit of a heart attack though, because I'm like, blip, blip, blip. And it's, you know, essential stuff. So I, I would say the, the, for, the forethought is put a little thing away. Just keep that, keep that habit up of doing that. Um, can, can, but can, also uh, like, uh, man, but before we depart from, uh, your initial point that, uh, being forgetful, uh, in, in the moment can either be a benefit or a detriment, um, uh, culturally it, when it comes to cultural cachet, uh, I, I'm certain I've mentioned this before, but like, I know that past Brian, uh, uh, maybe was mad at certain people, uh, but past Brian was smart enough to be mad at them on Twitter and, oh, I'll get you. I'm going to put you in my special list called cool people you should pay attention to and say nice things to. And then, sure enough, I have no idea why I was ever mad at them or what I ever did that to have <laughs> beef with them. But, but present Brian, day after day, would just... Like somebody would say a thing and I'm like, that's great for you. And then all of a sudden it's five years later and neither one of us remembers what we were upset about. Yeah, I, I would certainly say, you know, and I'll give you one more thing I think about just for unforeseen circumstances is to say like dealing as a creative independent and how to deal with that. Man, Google Sheets is your friend. Google Sheets is a thing that, that, that when things were, you know, at their tightest, I would go in there and list every single expense, everything like that. And then also find out the surprise, like, why do I have an AWS bill for 40 bucks this month? And then some of those reoccurring things come up, like things come out of nowhere. And you're like, oh man, you know, do I need, you know, uh, you know, amazing magic dot pizza, you know, <laughs> so you're uh, like, you realize how much stupid stuff is out there, you know, unforeseen stuff, but like spreadsheets are your friends. But to your point about that, Brian, like, I, I agree, like, man, um, uh, there have been people, some of the best relationships I've had have been people that I was at odds with initially or whatever. And I said, I just, I'm going to talk to them and get to know the person. And then that has opened amazing doors for me. Yeah. It's, it, it's hard to talk to people that you actively hate. It's easy to talk to people that you think you kind of remember at some point you hated? <laughs> I, I, I ended up at a dinner with one of the, the, the we'll say the most successful professional and you know, professional investor in one of the, in the history, right? One of the most successful investors in history, very big tech guy, whatever. 
because somebody said something on Twitter I disagreed with, but I looked at the other things this person had said and said, you know what, there's some common ground there. I reached out to that person and said, hey, I'd love to talk to you because I, you know, I think, you know, I give it here, but I want to give you a different take on that. Became great friends with this person. And then one day, like, hey, do you want to go meet so and so? I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't mind it. I mean, yeah, networking is is interesting, and especially when you're in the world of intellectual debate or or you know takes in general and that's become so much of how we interact because there's not really a common media that everybody can be like oh well we all have an opinion on this writer or this kind of coverage like that that does exist but not in the same cultural way that it did 20 years ago now it's all of our own takes we say a thing on the internet and people form an opinion about it and that's that's kind of where the the, the orbit goes but it does help to understand hey, don't take it super seriously. If, if there's interesting thoughts about things that you really, really care about, it helps you to surround yourself with ideas that might not match yours. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I guess that's, that's another way of saying, like, ain't much money in grudges. Uh, no. It's, uh, I, I remember this. I don't know. There's like four, th four or five people that I really hate that I've built my entire career on. So I don't quite know. I, like, I, 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 I do agree that, that it is rocket fuel, but eventually rocket fuel burns you out from the inside. It, it, mm, I, remember I still, I go to sleep and I smile knowing that, <laughs> that, 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 dude's, <laughs> that that dude works at a coffee shop and not me. Like, I, I, uh, uh, okay. Every time I look down from space and I see There's, and I see that little speck, I, oh boy, does it bring joy to my uh, heart. The 1982-83 movie, uh, uh, Red Dawn, you know, there's, there's one guy who really is, uh, takes pride in all the the reds that he's taken and down and they encounter a outsider and he sees him uh uh using a rock to chisel yet another notch in his gun and and uh uh, uh the cool older cowboy kind of says uh all that fire is going to eat you up and he says well it keeps me warm at night <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. so i understand both sides of this i mean like but, but in all, in all seriousness i do think that you you should always be checking yourself to understand whether or not a personal grudge is affecting your ability to create, your ability to think, or your ability to do. Uh, because those are what I kind of collectively understand in myself uh, as kind of the mechanism. Is the mechanism firing? What is stopping up the mechanism? The thing that makes me me, that that goes and produces the content, that thinks of new content to do, uh, that that... Uh, understands when it's time to end certain things like that's it. And if that gets gunked up, then you got a problem. And that's where you can get over your skis and, and, you know, let your, I, let your, let, let, let your I, lizard brain rule. I, I knew a person, I want to get into naming names, but we'll probably all know who I'm talking about who was an incredibly talented person. And the internet was sort of the death of their output because they had to win every argument. Oh, they man. had to win every single argument. And I watched an extremely productive person who put out works every year or two stop the last 20 years of their life. They never released another thing. If you measured the sheer volume of words they spent arguing with people on the internet. Astonishing. Would yeah, and and I would point this out, and I would say, and I'd be like, "Oh no, but I, I got the I ca I can't the record, you know, like uh, the I have to I have to show, the record cast to show that I and I'm like, what record? Like yeah. it's the internet, it, it's being rewritten every day, and it was just, it was it was frustrating because this person part of their strength was their determination and their stubbornness was a superpower, but it was also like Batman, like hey Batman, you know what? Like why don't you put together a really good slate of candidates in Gotham and actually change the city? You yeah, know? <laughs> you know, like not just Harvey Dent, like really, really, you know, a scholarship program, you know, rebuild the colleges, Arkham Asylum, you know, they could really use from some really good professional, you know, leadership. But no, go <laughs> wait, out the street. Wait, beat wait, up, beat why up. don't you host TED Talks and have the best minds on the planet? I would love help yeah, you to no. make a real change. Uh, 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 Bruce Wayne's political action committee, Bat Pack. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh it was it was heartbreaking to watch that happen and i took that onto myself because i realized sometimes uh somebody said a thing yes on twitter oh, and i'm like that's nah, not correct 
I'm going to correct this. I, I want to say a thing. And then I, I looked and I'm like, what's going to happen? I'm going to say a thing. And then this person is either going to respond and they're not going to agree with me. And I'm going to have to make my case and go back. Sometimes things are worth like I am. I am certain people. Some things I do believe some discussions are worth having. But I go, is this a discussion that's important to me? Do do yeah. I really need to explain this? I'm like, no. Uh, I, I know I have certainly. And, sorry, uh, 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 Andrew, you just dropped out for a second. But uh, 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 I have very much had to drill into my psyche to hard to rewire part of how I live my life when I know my living is our political takes. I can give them away for free on a message board uh, uh, for nothing, or I can put them into my craft. I can maybe hone these ideas a little bit more and I can put them out to the people that actually pay me. Uh, there is a finite amount of time in the day. There's a finite amount of effort that you have. And I believe that there's a finite amount of just cycles that you have in your head based on the hardware that you are given and how much you optimize it. Uh, that is a time suck. It can be a, a, a sharpening at times. It's good to, to go back and forth. It's good to challenge your ideas. It's good to find out what you would say if you need to state it. But good Lord, can it be a place where you spin your wheels infinitely? I... I have a friend that used the expression, put the rope down, like the tug of war rope, like yeah. put the rope down, like, like, and, and that, that's been a big thing for me. And to just realize, oh, I, and the, the thing that's helped me so much is I go, what is my core goal? What is my core thing? Okay. My, my priority is, you know, my wife, you know, uh, my friends, my career, you know, my family, my career, like the order in which I make decisions based upon how that is affected. And I think that, that certainly helps you figure out like, what do I need to prioritize? What's critical? What's not? Um, uh, I don't know. I think probably I've gone far, very far away from your original question, Brian, and I probably spoke. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I think we're still in the same zone. Uh, originally, my prompt was uh, basically what <laughs> look happens. At, look at, I was just saying, I'm going to have like how much there's the argument, how much we've influenced language models and how much they're influencing us. Yep. Uh, uh, yep. It, it's it, it, there's a feedback loop. I uh, I agree. <laughs> this uh, conversation comprises of Brian, <laughs> Andrew, and Justin. <laughs> but as my, a podcast host, I am only my my uh, original prompt question was: um, uh, How does an independent creator deal with uh, uh, increasing obligations? Because uh, uh, you you exactly nailed it, Andrew. Where it's like uh, in 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 the case of my journey, you know, we've talked about it. You know, I lost my brother to addiction, and that causes one to have to say no on his way down to various things. And it's like, well, what what is in bounds and out of bounds and all that stuff. So so I I've, I've thought about those boundaries quite a bit, uh, but then those boundaries, uh, the the new interesting thing is that those boundaries can expand as well. Uh, uh, you know, they expanded when you got married, Andrew. Uh, who knows, Justin? Maybe they'll expand for you someday. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm allowed to say. Uh, the thing we announced publicly on the internet on Tuesday? It's been all over Twitter. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. So they, expa <laughs> they, they, they expanded for Justin when, when he disclosed. I didn't understand it because I'm like, that's been announced. I was really confused by this. It was like, we're like, we're like yeah, Justin's having a baby, everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Ashley, too. Ashley's involved. Ashley's mostly having the baby. Uh, uh, but, but, uh, yeah. My, sorry, I, 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 I tiptoed when I shouldn't have. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but my I just assumed it was Brian, just you wanting to center it all around yourself. Which wait, would Justin, up. I think we have to step back and applaud Brian for yeah. his discretion. He did. He showed his discretion. This. Yes. And you did this. This is that you, you. I'm impressed, Brian. You 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 were. You know, I'm not spoiler, normally. Brian may not be. I'm not normally that good at that kind of thing, but <laughs> 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 but 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 uh, uh, I I guess. Uh, uh, I don't know. It, it's uh, uh, like, yeah, I don't know how much time we have. Uh, we'll, we'll follow it up later. But basically, it's like uh, you're, you're not your body makes a promise, but like your, <laughs> your heart makes a promise. And 
that changes the rules for the independent creator. And I think that uh, in various ways, all three of us have gone through that. And uh, that, that was really what I wanted to just sort of, you know, yeah, I, contemplate. Yeah. The, yeah, you know, when you say I do, or they go, congratulations, you know, it's alive that these things and, in, in, you know, Brian, we've talked about this before. It's like the, you, everything extends outward from yourself to what's going around you. You know, there's you, there's your loved ones, there's a family, there's your friends and friends and family can often be interchangeable. Um, and that's how you set up your values and you have to prioritize that. You know, I was you know, talking to my wife as we've talked about the idea of, you know, having kids and, you know, you know, now that I'm, uh, you know, I'm, doing in startup mode it's different than when i had the security of a job and she's like well how would you feel about this i said well i mean we're we're in a good position but i said i would do whatever it takes if yeah. if if i realized oh i you know i i'm don't have money for baby food whatever i would do doordash i would do i would do i would hopefully be able to find better ways to engage my talents or my skills but i will do whatever that would be my priority i said that you know because he's like oh what if we have a kid and, and they're you know we don't like the school or whatever and it's really effective i'm like we would move like that yeah. that's having a kid to me means most of my decisions are going to center around the well but you know the you know the successful outcome of that kid uh uh ditto uh uh yeah i think that there's uh uh, uh for for me, I don't know what the answer is. Obviously, we are. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know in a couple of years. <laughs> but uh, I have ideas. I have thoughts. You know, and and I the one thing that I am I am absolutely positively sure of is that already I've seen a sharpening of my focus uh, with the idea being like, hey, look, what makes money, what doesn't. Let's let's uh, 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 tamp down some stuff. Let's ramp up other stuff. Let's make it easier to do the stuff that matters to, to make sure that I continue to keep community, that I keep uh, 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 the the engine turning and, and also just make bigger, better, faster, stronger, continue to uh, 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 try to do stuff that that people like. And then, and then yeah, if the, it, if it fail that literally anything, literally mm, like mm, there, there's, there's no quit mm, here. There's huh, no, huh, there's no end. Huh, there's no like, huh, like good enough. Uh, there's no wrong answers. Who wants a sexual advance? Uh, let's go. <laughs> I, I knew I was going to have kids until later on in life because I wanted to just certain, get certain personal achieve goals out of the way because I didn't want to have two other people or more, um, uh, have to sacrifice too much for me to pursue the things that I was doing. And that's why I made the you know, decision to get married later and whatnot. Um, but I always knew that if, if, or if it happened earlier, I met the perfect person, whatever, then you would just adapt. Like they're really, you can adapt to these things. I would say growing up, if I look at my friends who were, I had some friends that were poor, some friends that were wealthy, the, the, the kids that were the happiest were the ones that had parents that loved them. Sometimes it was a single parent, but the yeah. kids that had the parents that were there and whatnot. And maybe, you know, maybe dad lost a job for a while and, and things were tight and whatever, but he didn't take it out on the kids. Was not using drugs or whatever? And, and I think back, like what makes something happiness, like happy people, you know, happy people makes that that's, that's the bottom line. So. Yeah, there we go. Um, and I'm going to make sure my kids are dumb and go to community college. So there we go. Too. I think it's you're gonna book. Have a... stop reading these books. Yeah. Go, on, get that over. Go play some video games. <laughs> yeah. You see them reading a techno thriller and you're like, where did you get these? How did you learn to read these? <laughs> you, Dad. I learned it from watching they, you. <laughs> yeah. I there I can't find my homework. I don't know. It's, it's hard to know. These things lose themselves. You know, the dog <laughs> ate the homework again, you know. <laughs> uh, I yeah. <laughs> I want to. I want to close on sort. I want to give you a kind of a pitch here. All right. Um, I love my iPhone. Okay, I love my iPhone. Let me oh my god, I smell a butt. Yeah, I, I, I. It's a man. It's super useful. I think it's city art. The cameras are good for the three times a year that I take a photo that I really want. <laughs> um, and if you said what would get me to switch to Android or whatever, I'd be like. Pfft. Yeah, I mean, although I do own an Android and have an Android phone, and I've always kept that as a backup, but um, uh, might might need a new, you know, new phone as a backup if I, you know, trying to justify this, whatever. Because uh, you you heard about the nothing phone? 
Oh, the the Diet Coke of phones. Yeah, so nothing is their own, you know, brand trying to go about from different design practices, sustainable materials, et cetera, whatever. I'm like, whatever, hippies. And then they built in chat GPT. Like on and the f- on device. Basically, well, it's it's easier to integrate from it. If you go look at the uh, uh, nothing phone and you scroll down, you'll see the uh, basically you can just from your your uh, their own they have their own version of the AirBuds AirPods. You can basically from there you can activate it and just start talking to Chat GPT. It's built into the notification screen, so it's basically at kind of like a uh, root level access to it. Oh. Which, Interesting. And it is very stylish. Yeah. That, you just passed that. That was go back up. You'll see the chat GPT integrated right over there. Yeah. Um, and is it running its own OS or, or is it an Android? Android. Fork? It's Android. Android. Fork? It's Android. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, how much is it? Uh, it's, you know, phone. It's a phone price. Phone price. You know. Just one unit of phone. The 2A. Oh, the 2A is what? 350 bucks. I mean, it's the developer. Wait, no, that's the developer program. No, okay. like, that can't be right. Uh, um, wait, no, I think the developer. It might be. Uh, I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll be curious to see what um, what uh, uh, Apple does do with, uh, you know, allegedly Google, reportedly Google, in terms of building stuff in. Uh, hey, uh, my pick last week was Fallout, uh, but. My new pick is the last three episodes of Fallout because uh, the the first seven that I think was all I had seen at that point were uh, mainly like I was just thrilled that they, they nailed the universe and they made some winks and nods to anybody who's played the game and there's some madcap, a little bit of wackiness here and there. But the last three episodes are... Uh, Awesome. God, like, you know, I, I hope that at some point there's like a million dollar an episode budget for the telling the story of the 1997 uh, rivalry between Sting and Hollywood Hulk Hogan and WCW. And I hope that all the best character actors of their generation come out. And I hope that it doesn't explain shit to anybody who didn't watch it. And then everybody gets really excited who remembers that uh, 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 professional wrestling feud. And everybody else can say, oh, that was, that was a show. That was definitely a show. Now, I'm only a, 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 an episode and a half into Fallout. But this genre oh, so, of so, so television. Far, it's all, this, okay, this, I get it. <laughs> uh, this, this television genre of all my video game friends are over the moon. Oh my God, what a great, I'm sure for them, phenomenal adaptation to a thing that they had previously liked. But boy, it, it's a lot of blue milk for me. Uh, well, we'll see how you feel in a, in a few more days. Hopefully, at least they don't uh, make I'll- me, at, le- at least they don't make me watch 10 minutes of people talking about how faithful it is to the video game like The Last of Us did. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last of us was one of those things that I watched it. It's fine. Then it went away and I'm like, yeah, it's good. Oh, they're doing a season two. Oh, you know, whatever. Uh, Cause I'm just not getting up zombie stuff. But, uh, so Justin, how far into fallout did you get? We, uh, so we fell asleep in episode two, but that was not because it was boring. It was because it was later into the evening. And, um, so, we now that we are done with the regime and we're done with uh, we are up to date on Shogun. Any television time this weekend will be Fallout, and so uh, we will we will see where we go. But up till now, boy, a lot of table setting and a, a a a lot of characters that I don't really give a crap about. But uh, uh, maybe I will. Mm, interesting. But again, again, I'm sure that they're very, very faithful to the game, and a lot of people who have a previous uh, uh, appreciation Brian of this world. Well, oh, well, uh, 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 I'm, 
I, I don't want to explain or nothing, but but just just know that 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 uh, the Fallout game series has always been an anthology. You're always in a new place doing a new thing, and so uh, they they pulled off the trick of like this could have been a video game because they told a totally different story from any other version that I'd heard before. Uh, so well, it's a universe that people seem engrossed by. So yeah, uh, uh, hopefully, I don't know. Maybe it'd be good. I, uh, I'll give a pick, which is, uh, I've joined this more than I thought I would, uh, X-Men 97. Oh yeah. I, I, I've I'm heard really good things about nothing it. Nothing but good buzz about it. Yeah. So, uh, the, you know, the one person doesn't know. So what they did is the, there was a 1990s X-Men show, which actually was written at kind of more of a, if you're a comic, a comic book level, the storylines, yes. it wasn't like a kitty show. It was, you know, there was some elements of that, but it was written with like, comic book level themes interplaying characters whatever and was really well liked and then it went away and then disney brought it back and i'll tell you my theory on this is not my only theory they basically started a new x-men cartoon series and they said well let's do the next season of x-men from 1997 and pick up where that left off with you know 25 years of understanding you know a little more sophisticated storytelling understanding kind of what sort of our fun kind of 90s tropes and stuff and uh, i've been enjoying it i've really been enjoying this thing and i was never a big fan of the original cartoon because you know i'm an adult but uh i i watching this now and i've been fun like the stories the pacing the movement whatever the really really good and i think part of the reason they're doing this is they want to they want to set up the multiverse saga and disney this was still at a point when Marvel was like, we'll create all these other sort of TV things to set up the movie thing, much to Brian's talking about Fallout and Justin's point about, well, that's a lot of blue milk. And I think that this can't got greenlit when they were still, we need to create a lot of blue milk yeah. for people because these things are going to tie into the movies. Like in Multiverse of Madness, when Professor Xavier appeared in his hover chair, they used the theme song yeah. from the 90s X-Men cartoon, which was kind of a hint that if we see the X-Men... It's probably not going to be the Fox movie X Men. Yes, it might be you know the 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 yeah the animated X Men, and there's other clues that that might be the case too. And so there's probably a lot of seeds being laid down in here for the Marvel multiverse saga. If only I could bring myself to care about their theatrical films. Uh, I've heard I've heard really really good stuff about it. I, I uh, uh, I'm excited to watch it. Yeah. So anyhow, it's my pick, my- gentlemen. My pick is oh. the feud between Hollywood Hulk Hogan and Sting in WCW <laughs> 1997, available on Peacock. Just watch a bunch of Monday Nitros. Okay. Trust me, you can't miss it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's been after. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, okay, so there was only that one uh, internet hiccup that I'll have to fix, but... Uh, 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 in the interest of, uh, uh, of, of capturing our Friday nights, uh, we'll go ahead and shut down the stream. Um, uh, man, it, I really enjoy us all getting together. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, Brian, I, I realized we had like another episode in the bank. So I posted that yesterday. So we're fine for a few days, whatever. So don't feel. Okay. You know, well, whatever I, I, you want. Uh, I'll, I'll keep you up to date. I'll, I'll let you know when things are happening on the posting cool. side. That works. All right. Goodbye, Great. stream. Yeah.